Oh, what is the up, skis, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the GX Gamer Cast. We're on episode 83 of my little gaming show where once a week I just have to talk about video games. I love them so damn much. Old games from my past, new games that I'm playing today, it doesn't matter. Video games. You like video games? You might have a good time here today and pretty fun special episode for today. Gonna be talking about the PlayStation 1, the old original, baby, where it all started. Well, for some of us, I'm guessing. Now, technically, I didn't start on the PlayStation. Technically, I'm a Nintendo kid. I Once the, the lights flicked on and my brain started remembering shit, uh, I was a Nintendo and a Super Nintendo kid until around... Uh, I don't know, five or six, my mom bought me a PlayStation, and I pretty much have been a PlayStation guy ever since, but I love video games. I like Xbox, I like Nintendo, but if I had to pick one and you're only, you only could take one console on an island with you, I'm going to pick the Sony console because that's just what I kind of grew up on. So I'm going to be talking about all the video games that I played when I was a kid. Uh, not a lot of great games, especially uh, iconic games from the PlayStation 1 library. A lot of games there that I missed, but I have a couple of bangers that I grew up with. But mostly just some, like, not okay games. Games you would expect a kid to own, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't growing up with Resident Evil and Silent Hill and stuff like that. So, got a big old list of games. I'm going to talk about every single one of them. Some of them spend some good amount of time with some. Not so much, because there's not much to say about them. But before we get into that, let's talk about what I have been up to over the last week or so, and I always encourage you, the viewer, the listener, let me know what you've been up to over the last week or so, what video games are you diving into, what movies have you seen recently, and what TV shows are you binging on right now, like my wife and I are binging Survivor, we are still on the Survivor kick, loving it right now, I, th- oh, geez. I think we've gone through four seasons now of Survivor, uh, just finished off, oh, geez, what was it? It was like Hustlers versus uh, uh, Beauties and something like that. Anyway, that was that was really good. We're back to like season 32 now because we missed that one, so we're watching that. Love and Survivor, man. I, I just caught the bug. It's it's really, yeah, if you haven't watched Survivor in a long time like me, it's, uh, yeah, it's worth going into and I mean, we just recently got the Paramount Plus. That's where you can watch most of the Survivor. You know, if you're Canadian like I am, they'd only let you go from, like, season 32 onward. If you're American, you can watch them all. My wife and I want to go back and watch, like, the original, like, 1, 2, 3, and stuff like that. But for now, we're still all the way in Survivor. We watch it every single night, and it's a blast. On the side, I watched... uh, This was on YouTube, basically, but uh, really old show called Tool Academy, I think it's from like 2005, something like that, old reality show, and I was watching it on YouTube with Gunner TV, I like that guy, he's really funny, but uh, Tool Academy, it's about a group of fucking tools, these guys that are, you know, fuck boys, they're cheating on their girlfriends, just complete douchebags, and their girlfriends bring them, trick them onto the show thinking that they're gonna be like winning the oh I'm the best award basically and then yeah they come on and they try to teach these tools how to treat women properly or a little bit better it's it's bad it's like extremely bad but it's it's reality tv show you know that's that's what you want the more cringy it is the more ridiculous these people are on the show the the more entertaining it was it was very entertaining to watch like there was a dude on there that would just flip out for no reason all the time. And his name was Macho Flex or something like that. Like, what the fuck? Really weird. I can't recommend it, but I just... I love YouTube, so that's just what I've been watching on YouTube recently. And that's all I've been watching in terms of TV shows. I got in two movies this week. This is a lot of fun. So, let's start with the one that just knocked my socks off. And that movie is Wonka. Oh my god. God, I was not expecting to like this movie as much as I did. I am a huge old school Willy Wonka guy. Like, my family, we would always watch Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory Thanksgiving. That was my Thanksgiving movie. And yeah, I'm a huge, all about the old one. I didn't watch the 2005 one with Johnny Depp. I just, I was like, I don't, I I have the original. I don't need that. 
But this one piqued my interest, and my wife and I watched it, and it was phenomenal. It was outstanding. It's not a remake or anything. It's actually more of a, what do you call it, an origin story for Willy Wonka. It takes place before he even has the chocolate factory and everything. Really cool concept, and I I, I, can't, I have to say, I have not laughed this hard at a movie in a minute. Now, yes, I was I was uh, on Shrooms, which I highly recommend for this movie. Outstanding. But this was a hilarious movie. Um, I love Key and Peele. I can't remember his name for... I think it's Peele, the one that doesn't make movies right now. But he played, like, this, uh, this cop. And every second that guy was on screen, I was in tears laughing. He was just so funny. He looked funny. The songs were really good. I was surprised at how good and catchy the songs were. Very funny movie, visually very appealing, and it was a just a really charming story. This one I can absolutely see being like an all-time classic for kids growing up at this time. Like they're going to be 30, 40 years from now they're like, "Oh, let's, you know, let's gather my kids around to watch Wonka like, you know, how I did watching Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory." It was very good. My favorite movie of the year so far. Hitting that with a 9 out of 10. It was spectacular. Movie is awesome. I think it's on uh, Crave right now, at least in Canada. So check that one out. And the other movie I watched is Five Nights at Freddy's. So horror movie based off of the horror video game Five Nights at Freddy's. Now I'm aware of the video game. I, I was there for the big YouTube craze where everybody played it. And I was like, yeah, okay. And then the movie got announced. I was like, okay, interesting. Let's see how that goes. And it wasn't very good, I will say. I, I It wasn't for me. I didn't like what they did with the movie. Not what I was expecting. Like, my wife actually brought up an interesting tidbit. She's like, maybe it's more of a, a horror movie for kids, if that makes sense. Because it was not scary even at all. Like, not even close. Like... The, there was virtually no jump scares like you would expect from the video game. The video game is all about jump scares. Like, bam, right in your face, very loud and aggressive jump scares. There was, like, none of that in this movie. I thought I didn't even like the animatronic dudes in... Like, they look good, I will say that. They did look good. They looked like they did in the video game. Uh, the cupcake, though, that thing, that looked like shit, but... Um, yeah, it wasn't scary, the characters kind of sucked, like, the girl in it, like, there's, uh, the, the security guy, his sister, she kind of sucked, like, she was just kind of a bitch and annoying and, and not very likable, the main dude was just very generic, uh, yeah, the scares weren't there, I didn't like this movie, my wife liked it, um, I hit it with, like, a four and a half out of ten, I... I don't know. It felt like they were more like trying to build it into a franchise. Like, I feel like they're going to make a bunch of these movies and they're just going to be like, eh. It was not the direction I thought it was going. It did kind of like oddly to say it did kind of have like a family friendly vibe to it, which wasn't. I don't know, man. It was just a weird movie. Not for me. I don't like I didn't like it. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, so if you want to check it out, check it out. But uh, you'll probably just be like, huh. Could have done something better with my two hours, but there it is. So that's all the movies and shows. Let's talk about some video games that I've been playing. So I've been playing through Sekiro. I think I am at the end. I, I just, I was just playing it and I got to a very iconic looking field that uh, I feel like is at the end of the game. So that's where I'm at currently. Game is hella hard. It's definitely going to go down as, holy shit, my cats are running around. Definitely going to go down as one of the hardest games I've ever played. It's uh, very challenging, very rewarding at the same time. And I'm hoping to have a review for that for the next episode of the GamerCast. I should be done with it. I don't think that'll be an issue. <clears throat> and it'll be more of a, it's like a review, but I'm mostly going to be talking about the boss fight and stuff like that. Should be a lot of fun. Still playing Bellatro, and I finally was able to get my first victory in Bellatro. I think I have two or three of them now. Now that I get it, it's uh, once you get your first victory, it's, it's a lot easier to win. And yeah, I'm still enjoying it. Uh, I know I've heard some of the Bellatro lovers, they're starting to fall off a little bit now that they got a handful of victories. They're like, oh, I don't really see how much further I can go with it, but I've put in like six hours and I'm still loving it. So Bellatro is still awesome. Forza Motorsport, still more racing. Not much more to say about that. It's just a really good racing video game. And I started up a couple of different games this week. Started up Persona 5 Tactica. 
Yeah, so that one, it was just been on my list for a long time. Just finished Persona, and I was like, I could, I still feel in the vibe of Persona. So let's try out this Tactica game, and so far, so good. I've played a handful of hours. It's, it's definitely got the vibe of Persona. The music is fantastic. I love the, the art direction, this, like, overly cute, uh, like, art style that they got going on with Persona. All the characters look very, very cute. I am so happy to have Morgana back. I miss that little fuck. And gameplay is fine. It's um, kind of like the Mario and Rabbids Battle Royale, like, Tactica. It's not very deep. It's pretty simple, but it's kind of fun. It's it's not like, it's not, like I said, it's not a very deep strategy game. I'm not far into it yet, but it's fine. It's solid. If you like Persona... You're going to like this for the vibes and the characters and the story. Uh, Gameplay-wise, if you're coming at this just wanting, like, a strategy game, it's probably better ones to go for here. But uh, it's good. It's so far so good. And I jumped into, I have not played an NHL game in a while, but I downloaded NHL 24 because I couldn't fit NBA 2K24 on my Xbox. It's just way too big. Wanted to play GM mode, so all right, fine. I downloaded NHL Started playing GM mode, and um, yeah, like I said, I haven't played NHL in a couple years, and nothing's changed. Zero things have changed so far in my few hours of playing GM mode. I'm like a couple of seasons in my GM mode. Nothing's changed. The trading is even easier than ever. I'm doing a Calgary Flames GM mode, and I've completely changed the team, like no problem. Trades are easy peasy. Teams are still dumb as fuck. Like, they're like, oh, let's just trade away this superstar and we'll keep the old fucking guy around. Like, yeah, the AI is dumb as fuck, but it's still, like, it's fun GM mode. Like, I'm having fun. I'm addicted to it. It's just, like, this is why I stopped playing these games because it's the same thing over and over again. They really don't respect me as a player. Like, you know, I I don't buy these games anymore. I just doubt it was on game pass i think or my buddy had it so um yeah it's just it's just very like every time i play these games just feels like a slap in the face from ea and yeah they just have no time for the nhl games they just plop them out every year kind of been the exact same video game since i don't know nhl 15 and they just been yeah ever since nhl 15 happened the nhl games have just not been for me anymore they're just i still play them and enjoy them for what they are but my god just the nhl games have fallen so far from grace from the old amazing days of ps1 2 and 3 like ps4 and 5 and this generation of sports games been very underwhelming very disappointing hopefully one day nhl can get someone else to work on i was talking with my buddy like i know like if 2k got it it wouldn't be a lot like it wouldn't be amazing or anything the the nhl game we deserve but it would be better i think i mean if we're gonna get the nhl game i think we deserve it'd be awesome if mlb the show guys san uh, uh sony santa monica can get their hands on the nhl license and make us a nhl video game that's worth our time but uh, that's never gonna happen so i don't know if we're ever gonna get uh, good NHL video games ever again. It's it's in a bad place, but I'm I'm playing it. I haven't tried any of the gameplay yet. Like I haven't tried any of the new gameplay mechanics. Like the parallel passing is all new and all that. I haven't gotten into it. Just playing GM mode right now, and it's it's fun for what it is. But yeah, it hasn't changed in 15 years. So there's that. So that's everything that I've been playing right now. Let's dive into it, baby. Let's talk about a boatload of PlayStation 1 games that I grew up with, and hopefully you grew up with some of these games as well. Oh my goodness, I got chills just hearing that freaking startup sound again, and oh man, yeah, like I said, uh, I did technically grow up as a Sony kid, but I don't like to label myself as just a one brand gamer. I like I like everything. I, I'm good with any system, but uh, when you're a kid, you generally only get to have one system growing up. Now, I am a divorced kid, so uh, my dad had the Sega Saturn and my mom had the PlayStation 1. So, majority of the time was spent with my mom, so I had a lot more time with the PlayStation 1. So, I'm going to go through... All the games that I grew up with, I tracked down a list 
of all the PlayStation 1 games with pictures, just siphon through all the pictures, and when I, re- I, rec- I knew, I was like, if I could see the pictures, I'll recognize them, and I listed down every game that I played and owned at one point. Uh, some of these I still own today, a lot of them I don't, but um, we're going to go through this list. I'm going to talk about all the games, and let's go down memory lane, baby. This is going to be a lot of fun, and we are starting off with maybe the most iconic game on the PlayStation 1. If you didn't have this game, then what the hell were you doing with your life when you weren't playing bowling? Oh, baby. Good old-fashioned bowling on PlayStation 1. It was a very mediocre game. It is exactly what it is. It's bowling. You can play 5-pin, 10-pin. I think they even had like a 100-pin, 300-pin maybe. I mean, I played this a lot more than I would like to admit. It's It was simple. It's like, oh, you want to play some bowling? You know, play around with my sister. It was something that I can convince my dad to play with me. So, yeah, a lot of these games would be selected from my dad. A lot of these games are getting picked out of bargain bins. There aren't going to be a lot of great games here, but bowling. I mean, it's bowling. It's, it's inoffensive, but uh, not very good. And now we move on to the next game. In this game, I finally found out the name of this one. I I remember this game very vividly and not knowing what the fuck to do ever, but that game is Broken Sword 2, The Smoking Mirror. So that might explain why my sister and I had no idea what the hell was going on with this game, because it's the sequel. So I don't know if there's anything to do with the first game to the second game, but this game was very strange. It was, it's like a point and click game, kind of like Monkey Island or something like that. And we never got very far in it. I, I only was able to get through a little bit of this game, but it has a hell of an opener to it. You are tied up in a chair in this room of a big old mansion. And the dude's just like, see you later. And he like lights the fucking room on fire. And he releases a poisonous tarantula into the room as well. It's like, what? Why? Why? You you really expect this poisonous tarantula to come over here and bite me while this house is on fire? Okay, pal. You do you. And I remember having to like knock a bookshelf over onto the spider to squish it. Really weird like mystery puzzle game or something like that. Uh, yeah, other than that, we, like, got out of the house and would, like, walk around the town a little bit, and, yeah, other than that, we really, it was a game that we were way too young to have any idea, no guide, no internet, nothing like that to figure out what the hell is going on, but I remember playing that opening segment numerous times, and just a really fucking weird game, and I still own this one, oddly, I don't know why I never got rid of this one, but it didn't. Up next, we got a racing game called Grand Tour Racing 98. It's um, It was an okay racing game that I remember. I uh, don't think it's a series that is still going strong today. I, I don't know if there's a Grand Tour Racing still going, maybe. But it was fine, very standard racing game. I remember it being pretty alright. I did enjoy playing it. Um... Yeah, just kind of a standard racer. Uh, Not much more to say about it than that. Oh, buddy, the next game. Iconic. Again, if you weren't playing this game, what the hell were you doing with yourself? Not playing card games. Oh, buddy. Oh, classic card games. You got your poker. You got your blackjack. You got all that kind of shit. And again, not a very good game. I remember, oh man, I remember playing a lot of blackjack with this one, and, like, the weird voiceovers in this game, like, stand up, and it's like, oh, okay, I'm, I guess I'm standing on this hand, um, I, you know, it, again, I was still probably too young to understand most of the card games, I think Blackjack was probably, uh, my limit, I don't think I was playing poker or Texas Hold'em or anything like that, but I don't, it wasn't like an RPG, but I think you could, like, buy stuff, you can, like, earn money, and, yeah, I I remember not getting very far, because I would always, um, lose all my money, and that would be game over, but card games, it is what it is, you play card games on the PlayStation 1, not very good, now we got a classic, Cool Borders 4, I didn't play 1, 2, or 3, went straight to 4, and it was fine, It was a fine snowboarding game. I I know that there's probably better ones at the time. And there are definitely the lovers of Cool Borders. And the people that are like, Cool Borders fucking sucks. 
I'm, I'm fine with Cool Borders. I played it quite a bit. I enjoyed it, doing some racing with my sister. I have another snowboarding game on this list that was much worse than this one. So, you know, I had no problem with Cool Borders. I enjoyed Cool Borders. Now, next up, we have Crash Bash. I did not play, and still, to this day, have not played a Crash Bandicoot game outside of Crash Bash. What is Crash Bash? Crash Bash is basically uh, Crash Bandicoot's Mario Party. Just a bunch of mini mini games that you can play. Uh, multiplayer, my sister and I loved this game. And it took us a while to actually get the actual game. We used to just play a demo of it on the Jam Pack. There was like a little demo disc. They had a bunch of them called Jam Pack. We had one that had Crash Bash on it. Played it. So much, we loved this game, and then finally got it, and yeah, we played the shit out of this one. I remember the boss fights being really challenging, and yeah, we, my sister and I loved this game. There's uh, The one that comes to mind, the little mini game that I, I remember the most is the, you're on the pogo sticks, and there's four of you, and you have to get the most, uh, you have to cover the most board with your color. Whoever has the most board with their color wins. And it was it was good, man. I really enjoyed Crash Bash. I know they just released some, like a Battle Royale something with Crash. I don't know if it has anything to do with Crash Bash. But, oh, buddy, I played the shit out of Crash Bash with my sister back in the day. And we got up next, it's Driver. And, oh, buddy, I was absolutely um, victim to the opening mission of driver never got through it and it's it's extremely hard it's probably one of the hardest opening levels of all time and if you're not familiar with that opening mission it's basically before you can even start this game up you have to do like this trial run where you got like 60 seconds to do like a huge list of things like you got to do a burnout you got to do a 360 you got to do you got to go through the freaking in between these like uh, pipes and stuff it's extremely hard and they just barely give you enough time to do it i remember watching my cousin do it first try and they were very good at video games they used to do that to me all the time like i'd be stuck on shit forever and they'd come do it first try and yeah they did the driver thing first try but never played driver outside of just driving around running away from the cops and that's it it was just a very early style sandbox game like you could just drive around wherever you want. And I think I think it was Miami where this one was taking place in. I did play Driver 2. Never owned it, but I played it. And I think that one takes place in San Francisco. I remember liking it, but not liking it as much as Driver 1. Driver 2, you can get out of the car. It was, like, pretty fucking ahead of its time, man. Like, if it was like Grand Theft Auto on PlayStation 1. And there was Grand Theft Auto on PlayStation 1. And I'll talk about it. But it was not like Driver 2. I'll tell you that. But played the shit out of Driver, man. So many times. Just going on huge police chases. Like, I go there, find a cop, you're like, oh... I'm gonna, like, just slightly go off the road and, like, hit a fence a little bit and the fucking cops are swarming all over you, going nuts, and you just last as long as you can until your car gets so damaged that you can't proceed any longer. That's all I did with Driver. Take in mind that when I went, I had my PlayStation 1, I was in the age range of probably 5 to 9 years old, I think I was playing my PlayStation 1, so there is that. But yeah, played the shit out of Driver. And the next one is Final Fantasy Tactics. Ah, yeah, so didn't get any of the big meaty RPGs of Final Fantasy back in the day. I remember watching my uncle play Final Fantasy VII. I remember watching my cousins play Final Fantasy VIII. But I never owned one of the mainline Final Fantasy games on PlayStation 1. But I did have Final Fantasy Tactics. And I still have it today. And I still can't beat that fucking game. It is hard as hell. Holy shit. I remember getting stuck on um i still remember the the level i would get stuck on it's like the first time they introduce a bunch of mages and it's like a whole bunch of elevated platforms and i remember not being able to get through it as a kid which i was like all right fine i remember selling that game i rebought it years later i was like oh i remember final fantasy tactics being awesome i want to play that i should be able to get through it again I got to the same freaking mission with like 10 years of brain development with me and I still couldn't get through it. I was like, wow, bro, this game is hard as shit. 
And um, yeah, I, I am hoping that they would uh, release like a, a version of this on Switch, maybe a remake or something like that. That would be great. I would love to play Final Fantasy Tactics on handheld because I still think it's one of the best uh, turn-based strategy RPGs of all time. It is a phenomenal game that I wish I can get through and hopefully one day they can re-release it on Switch and I can play it there. That would be great, but there's a ton of love for Final Fantasy Tactics. People love this game and I do too. It's a phenomenal game. Like, if you can track it down, I see it all the time. I, I Every time I go to a retro store, it's always there, but it's a fucking really good game. And I, I don't think the price on it has gotten out of control. Probably wrong on that because prices on everything are out of control right now. But yeah, Final Fantasy Tactics, one of the best of those style of uh, strategy RPGs, in my opinion. Up next, we got the game of life. The board game, the video game. Oh my goodness. I The game of life is one of my favorite board games. I, I played it all the time growing up. And I would go to my aunt's house and play the shit out of the game of life on the PlayStation with my, with my cousin and my sister. And yeah, we loved it. And they had the big, goofy, massive head models on the people. They looked so stupid. The only problem was this this game used to freeze on us all the time. And it used to freeze at the same spot where you're like... It's rather where you're getting married or you go pick your house. Which is like, oh, it's one of the most exciting parts. Like, oh, I'm going to pick my house. And yeah, game of life. It's the game of life in a video game. It's it's a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed that back in the day. And now we get to one of the ones that I still own this game and I played the shit out of this when I was a kid. And that is Grand Theft Auto 2. So this was before the big 3D jump for Grand Theft Auto 3 where everything changed. And Grand Theft Auto changed so much. But Grand Theft Auto 2 is a top-down uh, video game. Open world and it has a lot of the elements of Grand Theft Auto. You're doing... You know, missions, go take this over here. You're shooting these people. It's a violent video game. They're swearing. You can beat the shit out of people. You can run people over, steal their cars. Um, my favorite thing to do, my sister and I, we would find the tank. There's, like, a little hidden tank in the game. You can go on these, like, killing frenzies, and you just fucking slaughter everybody racking up the points and we would just try and last as long as possible before the cops take us over that was a lot of fun man i loved grand theft auto 2 played the shit out of that game and another one that we rarely ever did any of the missions i really was too young to understand that kind of stuff like you know progression in a video game i was just in this big sandbox and that's what i did i remember you know, being, you know, this is the kind of shit kids would do in these kind of games. I remember just trying to be a good citizen and try not to get in trouble and just pretending that I'm I'm a dad driving my family to a fucking vacation or something. Just, oh, stop at the red light. Make sure I'm not going too fast. Oh, no, I accidentally ran over 10 people. Now I'm in trouble. That would happen a lot. So, yeah, I played a ton of Grand Theft Auto. I love the opening cinematic for it. It was like a real video like a real movie with real actors and stuff and I was like oh that's so cool you know it's very tacky <laughs> for today's standards but I thought it was really cool to see like real people acting out the video game that I'm playing it was dope man I played the shit out of this game I still like quote it like people the the NPCs in the game they'll like say funny things um uh, if you run them over, like, maniac! <laughs> just, like, running around, maniac! I love that. And, oh my god, I just remember they had the a fart and burp button. You could just sit there and fart and burp on people, and you could fart on them to death if you just don't let them get up. And you just stand on them, and just farting on So stupid, so stupid, but Grand Theft Auto 2, one of my favorite games growing up as a kid. Fucking loved it. Oh, we got another legendary one right here. Harvest Moon, Back to Nature. Oh my god. This game took me forever to track down. I remember playing A Harvest Moon back in the day on the PlayStation 1. I was like, oh my god, that was my favorite freaking Harvest Moon of all time. I got so addicted to it. One of the earliest addictions I ever had in video games was Harvest Moon Back to Nature. I was so addicted to it going into the mines and just fucking 
what do you call it, mining, I guess, there you go, Jesus, getting the copper, getting that, fucking going after the girls, trying to get a wife, trying to make them like me, going to the springs and just fucking relaxing, chopping wood, your dog, oh my god, I loved Harvest Moon, and I was so devastated, I found Harvest Moon 64, and you're probably thinking, wow, that's awesome, why are you upset about that, the only reason why I'm upset (laughs) <laughs> that I got Harvest Moon 64 is that it's a different game than the PlayStation 1's Harvest Moon Back to Nature. It's very similar, but it's different. And I was like heartbroken. I was like, no, this isn't the same one that I grew up with. It's still really good. And I am so happy that I have a physical copy of, of Harvest Moon 64. But I don't have a copy of Harvest Moon Back to Nature. Thankfully, they did actually not long ago release it on the PlayStation plus plus whatever the hell it is so it's there for me uh, one day I'll get to that and I'll play that again but I still think that's the that's my favorite Harvest Moon of all time I've played a lot of Harvest Moons Harvest Moon games but that was my first one and there's just something special about the first Harvest Moon that you played and oh my god I loved Harvest Moon Back to Nature. Such a good game. And then we get to one of the worst games I've ever played. And this was 100% my dad. He picked this game up because he loves Kiss, the band. And they decided, hey, let's make a Kiss pinball video game. And... We played it quite a lot. My dad's a huge pinball nut. He loves pinball. Plays... Played that pinball on the computer a ton. He would play that for hours and hours and hours. And... Yeah, he bought this Kiss pinball video game. He loved Kiss, and he likes pinball, so it makes sense, but it's a fucking terrible video game. The camera's too close, like, you can't fucking see what the hell is going on. Um, yeah, man, it's it's bad. It's a really bad game, but it's pinball. They got, like, a handful of different tables. It's just bad it's bad and I still own it I still own it because who would buy it off me right I might as well just keep it and then the next one this is probably my most cherished PlayStation 1 game growing up and that is the Legend of Dragoon this was my big RP PlayStation 1 RPG growing up I didn't play Final Fantasy I didn't play Vagrant Story I didn't play any of those I played the Legend of Dragoon and I remember Man, it took my sister and I, like, weeks convincing my dad to buy us this game. And we really had no, we had no idea. We just wanted it because it looked cool. That's, that as as standard as that is to say, that that is how it was back then. You just don't have access to the internet. We didn't have reviews, like, on the level that we have now. So you just look at stuff and be like, that looks sick. I want that. And I remember we looked at Legend of the Dragoon. We're like, that looks awesome. We want it. And just my dad was like, nope, 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 nope. And basically we did the Simpsons thing. It's like, can we have it? Can we have it? Can we have it? Can we have it? Until we finally got it. And uh, fuck, man, I we love this game. All the, Just love this game. It took me a very long time to finally beat it. It took me... God, it's a four-disc game, and um, yeah, there was so many times I would get stumped on this game, you know, rather a boss fight that's just way too hard for me, or a puzzle, or or I don't know where to go next. Again, I was only like seven or eight years old when I was playing this, so it's, a, it's not like an advanced RPG or anything, but it is pretty tricky. I remember the boss fights being rather difficult, and I just, I love the characters. I thought, you know, Dart was so cool. I had all the toys. I remember going to Toys R Us, and they for, I don't know why they had toys for Legend of the Dragoon, but they did, and I had, like, all of them. It was awesome, and I just, I loved them turning into dragoons. I thought that was so fucking cool, and I thought the dragons in the game were so cool. The cutscenes were so freaking good, and I think they still look good today. Like, PS1 cutscenes, I think they still look good. Fight me, but... Legend of the Dragoon, that was my baby. I still adore that game. I still own it. And yeah, one day I will do a full episode on it, but I would like to do a replay of it, go through it. They have it on the PlayStation Plus now, so it's nice and easy for me to play it again. But Legend of the Dragoon, such a legendary, <laughs> legendary game for me. And um, yeah, I remember when I got my PS3, I spent every dime that I had getting that PlayStation 3. So I had no games for it. But I had Legend of the Dragoon. I was like, oh shit, 
I can pop this in, and I finally got through Legend of the Dragoon. All four discs, and I got to the part um, where I remember I got stuck. It was like a an invisible floor, and you have to just kind of figure out the path to get across this invisible floor, and we can never figure it out. And I got to that section when I was like, I was probably a teenager at the time, yeah, like 14, 15, when I finally beat it, and I got to that floor. I was like, are you fucking... It was so obvious to me, like, how to get by it. There's, like, these little fireballs that are coming up from underneath and it shows you which what parts of the floor are real and which ones aren't i'm like oh my god i was so stupid when i was a kid got through it beat the game no problem and loved it so legend of the dragoon one of my favorite games from if not my favorite playstation one game of all time and this one this next one's a little bit embarrassing to talk about but let's just rip this band-aid off mary kate and ashley crush course it may also be called crash course i don't know so I, I I had a little thing with Mary-Kate and Ashley growing up. I thought they were cute. I liked them. So we had their video game growing up. And this is, again, one of the worst video games I've ever played. But I played the shit out of this game, bro. I, I really did. Uh, mostly because I think it's like the third or fourth level of this game. It's, it's a mini putt. And it's not a very good mini putt, but it's the only mini putt that we had. And we liked it, so we played that a lot. But before you can get to the mini putt, you had to get through some god-awful gameplay. This game is ugly as sin. Uh, it's a horrible game. I think I think the first level, you're, like, walking around the school, like, taking pictures of people. It's fucking terrible. Another one, you're on the beach, and you're cleaning up garbage in a, in a certain amount of time. It's awful. And then you get to the mini golf, which is acceptable, I guess. It was fun enough, but it was still pretty busted. And holy shit, dude. I think I still have this game. The only thing that sucks is, for some reason, I don't have a lot of the, the manuals, the cover art anymore for these games. I don't know. I'm a stupid fucking idiot kid. And I I don't know why. I don't know where they are. But still have this game. My sister and I used to play it a lot. We could never beat it. I think it's... um. I think the level after the fucking mini putt, you have to do another cleanup thing, and we can never get by it. But, like, literally, like, you're picking up garbage. That's what they expect uh, you to have fun with in this game. It was not that not very fun, but I didn't have, like, Hot Shots Golf or anything else to play. So I was playing fucking Mary-Kate and Ashley Crush Course. I, I'm so sorry. Next up, we got Mass Destruction. This game, I remember picking it up in a bargain bin really cheap, and it was pretty good. It was all right. You're playing as a tank, and you're just going around shooting shit. Pretty old school, uh, just kind of a shoot 'em up game. It was really hard. I couldn't get far in that game. It's just too tough for me, but it was solid. We got Metal Gear Solid VR Missions. Damn it. Damn it, Mom. You were so close to getting me one of the best games of all time, but you got me VR Missions instead, which... I, again, I had no idea what the hell I was doing with that. I don't think I ever got past the first mission in this because I just had no idea what I was doing with it. Way too advanced of a video game for a seven, eight year old kid. So I didn't do a lot with it. Project Overkill. This game I still have, and it's one from the bargain bin. It was a very violent video game, kind of a isometric top down shooter kind of deal. And yeah, you would just go through rooms clearing out people, shooting them with a gun with tons of blood coming out. I remember there being so much blood and you can like walk through the blood and you're like, you know, having little bloody footprints all over the place. Very difficult video game, not one that I would get very far in before I get a game over, but it was okay. It was not great, not nothing, you know, just a game that I would try every once in a while, not get very far because it's too hard. Next up, very similar to uh, the last one, Reboot, like the TV show. I loved Reboot. Oh my god, my sister and I watched the shit out of Reboot, Enzo, Bob, the fucking hell yeah, man. And the thing about Reboot that I will never forget is the fact that, now if you watch Reboot, you, you might notice this too, you might know what I'm talking about, but motherfuckers in Reboot never walked. They couldn't walk. They did not have the the animation skills to animate walking until one episode they did. And I'll never forget it because my sister and I used to say this all the time. Like, they run everywhere. These people never walk. And we saw Enzo walking. And it was the worst fucking thing. It was the most awkward walking animation you will ever see in your life. And we're like, okay, we now understand why there is no walking in Reboot. But Reboot, 
the television show, YTV, that shit was was all time, bro. I loved Reboot. I'm, I am actually shocked that they have not rebooted Reboot yet. Like, what a concept. The kid puts in the game in his computer and these fucking... Oh, you're inside of a computer? Like, how cute. That show was so fucking cool. But the video game sucked. Couldn't get through the first level of this video game. It was super hard. Controls were terrible. There's really not much to say about the game because we barely touched it. It was just really hard and we had no idea what the hell to do. Next up, we have one of my favorites. It's Rival Schools. So I found out that this is kind of like a spin-off Street Fighter kind of situation. So this was my fighting game on the PlayStation 1. No, I didn't have Tekken. I didn't play Street Fighter. I didn't play I did play Virtual Fighter, but that was on Sega Saturn. On PlayStation 1, my sister and I were rocking Rival Schools. And a lot of people may not know what Rival Schools is. It's a very it's a, a fucking fighting game, but it revolves around a school, so you're fighting with I remember my favorite fighter. They have like Like, in school, they have little factions. There's like, oh, here's the sports kids. Here's the teachers. Here's the weird kids. Here's the popular kids. Shit like that. And my favorite was the... In the sports group, it was like the baseball guy. I love that guy. He was so cool. Big baseball back. And it was a fucking really good fighting game from what I remember. Uh, It's made by Capcom. So, you know, you're probably in good hands here with a fighting game. If it's a Capcom one, I... Lo- oh my god, I, re- I love the characters in this game, and they had awesome anime cutscenes, like real anime cutscenes, and we would watch those so much, my sister and I, you can like unlock them, and just watch them, and we watch them over and over and over again, and yeah man, it was a really awesome fucking fighting game, and I'm surprised I've I've not heard of Rival Schools ever again, I, I think there might actually be a Rival Schools 2, but Yeah, I I really, oh man, we love this game. It's a two-disc game, too. Uh, I don't recall if that's like a bonus disc. I should go check because I I own it. I still have this. That that was one I remember. I was like, I'm never selling this because it was just such a precious game to me. We loved it so much. And fuck, I'm trying to think of the characters my sister liked. She liked the, there was like a biker girl. She had like the biker helmet. She was really cool. Um... I also remember you could do, like, really cool combo moves as well. It was an awesome fighting game, man. I really loved Rival Schools. One of my favorite games growing up. Absolutely. And one of my favorite fighting games. We played a lot of Rival Schools. And up next, we have this one. I I I remember getting this game when I got my PlayStation 1. My mom bought bought us the PlayStation 1, and it was, like, this four-pack of games in, like, this... I remember uh, the... uh, in the plastic, the plastic was so hard to get at. It took us like an hour to even fucking get the plastic open. Anyway, there was four games in it, and Rushdown was one of the games in this package. And it's it's not a very good video game. It's um, like an extreme sports kind of deal. It's got um, downhill biking. It's got kayaking and snowboarding. There might be one other thing in there, but yeah, it was a butt ugly game controls were awful it was just not a very fun video game like it was just yeah like you get in the kayak they're like, yeah just go down this path there's really not much to it the controls were terrible it was yeah just not a very good one but I do remember going to it a lot like I'm just gonna play it for a little bit but yeah I didn't play it a lot next up we got one of my favorite racing games from the PlayStation 1 and that is Sledstorm oh baby I love Sledstorm First thing that I think of when I think of Sledstorm is um, Dragula by Rob Zombie. Banger tune right there, but that was like the song in Sledstorm. Fucking love Sledstorm, a snowmobile racing game, and it was awesome. Uh, I used to play the shit out of this with my dad and my sister, and it was awesome. Just a really good snowboarding game. A lot of good levels with hidden paths, and there was one level that had um, like a big kind of a a mountain slope in the middle of it. And there was um, a wolf howling at the end of it. And I remember we were so, we were so adamant that you can drive up that hill and hit the wolf and kill it because you can hit other animals. Like a bunny will run by and you can hit the bunny and like get points and shit. And you can do like tricks on your fucking snowmobile and wipe out and shit. It was an awesome video game. I love Sledstorm and surprised that I didn't, continue with Sledstorm. Uh, my wife had it on PS2. 
uh, when our when we got together, moved in together, we combined our collections. I was like, oh snap! There was a Sledstorm on PS2. She's like, yeah, I played that. I was like, oh snap! I played Sledstorm on PS1. That game was awesome. Next up, we got Spyro: Year of the Dragon. Oh yeah! So there's a classic, uh, a Spyro game. So I didn't play Crash Bandicoot, but I did play Spyro. Uh, my first, I don't, I think it was the second Spyro that I played first at my cousin's house. Didn't own it, but we did get to own Year of the Dragon, which was a awesome video game. Sister and I played it for years. I, I felt like we played this thing forever. Like another game where it'd be like, all right, we're making progress and then you get stumped. And then you're stumped forever. Probably go off, play some other games, come back to it months later and get a little bit further, get stumped again. I just remember those little fucks the little nan 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 you gotta like chase them around and catch them those guys were just god awful and not too long ago a few years ago i did the spyro ignited trilogy got went through all three of the games platinum all three of them uh, they're dirt easy i'm like i don't know why i had so much trouble with them as a kid but i did spyro you're the dragon kicked the shit out of my sister and i i feel like my sister might have 100 percented it she was way more of that style she liked to collect everything do everything me i just like to beat the games if there's more okay but i'm not always going to do everything but spyro you're the dragon fucking loved it next up oh man vigilante 8 oh my goodness so if you didn't have twisted metal you're probably playing vigilante 8 and yeah i i didn't know anything about twisted metal i i knew of the ice cream truck But uh, I had Vigilante 8, which is very similar to Twisted Metal. It's a a car battle game. You know, you're you're in your cars and you're like in a destruction dirt. You're on a level, collecting weapons, and you're just trying to blow up the other cars. Extremely fun. We, I love this game. I played the shit out of this game as a kid, man. Uh, My dude was the, he was in like a a Bronco, like a fucking Ford Bronco. And he'd shoot lightning bolts and he'd go, Latman, (laughs) Latman. I would just be doing that over and over again. That game was awesome, man. I, I didn't, I haven't played a lot of Twisted Metal in my life. I played a little bit of Twisted Metal Black and I enjoyed it very hard. But uh, I really like Vigilante, man. I like the characters there. They had, like, the school bus, and that was really iconic. I don't know. They didn't have an ice cream truck. That's, that's Twisted Metal. Ugh. I really played the shit out of this game. They're, the one dude that used to piss me off a lot, I think he was in um, just, like, a, a van, and his special move, he would, like, launch out these little flying saucers at you. Those things would fuck you up. Again, another game that was hard. The levels were a lot of fun. I think my favorite one, it's, like, you can go down into these, like, trenches and, like, waves of water would come and fuck you up if you don't get out of the way i remember playing that level a ton there was like um an airstrip where you're like on a in a airport and you can like actually get on a plane like drive into the plane go take off in midair that game was friggin' awesome man i have not seen vigilante i don't think i doubt that series is still going on i don't know if it ever had a sequel or anything like that but Every time I go to a retro game store, I always try and see it, and I just love seeing that, the fucking cover of that game, because it's another one that I never got rid of, but for some reason, I don't have the cover art for the game anymore. I don't know why I did that, but I'm an idiot kid. We got three more video games and three pretty big hitters for me right here. First up, we got WCW NWO Thunder. This game is super iconic for me. Uh, Sadly, you know, there was a a good plethora of good wrestling video games around this time. You got the N64, No Mercies. You got SmackDown 1 and 2. And sadly, I got a lot of the not good wrestling games. And this would be one of them. Now, back when you're six, seven years old, you don't really know the difference between a good and a bad video game as much as you would when you're older. And I didn't know that this was a bad video game, but it most certainly was Uh, terribly, terribly hard to control. Like it's uh, very complicated. I can never get any of the moves to work. Uh, Even if I, I like you look in the manual, it's got all the fucking combinations. They're just out of control. Like to fucking hit a power bomb. It's just like way too hard. You're like, what the shit? But it was all the other things about the game that I liked. I loved the character select screen. That by far is the best thing. 
you get all the wrestlers and each wrestler has a little video that you can watch and all they're trying to do is convince you to pick them and you know you got Roddy Piper going to like an 11 flipping out he's like pick me he's like god just pick me and then other guys like pick me i don't give a shit like go fuck yourself it's like oh my god i would just watch the videos over and over and over and over again and again i was a dumb little kid but my dad convinced me that he was in fact rowdy roddy piper and i thought that was the coolest shit ever but yeah the game sucked the fucking fans, all they would do is throw trash at me. <laughs> That's They definitely nailed that, because back in the day, man, like fans used to throw garbage in the ring, especially at WCW, all the time. And they got that in the video game. Like, whenever you're a, you're a bad guy and you do the, the taunt, they're throwing fucking just mountains of garbage at you. It's insane. But, uh, yeah, couldn't really do a lot in this game. I, I had a lot of trouble... Uh, just trying to do any maneuvers like if I can get my hands on weapons that would help out hitting people with fucking stop signs and shit like that but by far I still remember so vividly the little videos of all the wrestlers go check it out like it is so funny uh they're on YouTube you can just look it up WCW NWO Thunder the little videos and they're spectacular man especially the Roddy Piper one that's that's always been my favorite used to make me laugh Every single time, but it was a bad video game. Next up, we got WWF Warzone, which, you know, it, it I think it was better than WCW Thunder. Uh, this one had, it was the first ever wrestling game with a create a wrestler in it. And, oh my god, I created so many wrestlers. Oh my goodness. Make them so fat and stupid looking. It was awesome. Uh, that was the best part of the game. We spent, my sister and I would spend lots of time just creating ridiculous looking wrestlers. And then the gameplay, again, had no idea how to do any of the moves. All I remember doing is picking the rock and just scissor kicking over and over and over and over again to the point that the crowd is booing me because I'm doing the same move over and over again. They're throwing garbage at me, but it was the only way that I could win. So. That is what it is. I remember the character models looked like shit. Um, it wasn't a very good game, but it had the creator wrestler in it, which for the time was actually pretty good. There was a lot of different outfits you can make. I mean, obviously it is not anywhere near the level that we have now, but you got to start somewhere. And Warzone, that's where the creator wrestler started. And I was there for that. Played the shit out of it. We got... One more game, baby. One more game. This one kind of breaks my heart because it got stolen from me. And I loved this game. But that game is Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. Oh, yeah, baby. This is a fan favorite right here. My sister and I, we loved Yu-Gi-Oh! growing up. We were big card kids. You know, I did the Pokemon. I did the Digimon. And then we did the Yu-Gi-Oh! And Yu-Gi-Oh! was huge, man. Yu-Gi-Oh! was huge. And when we got this game, we were in love in love with this game i loved it so much the fact that you could combine like any two cards and it'll make something was just so much fun i i, I can't remember if it was this one i had a game boy color Yu-Gi-Oh game as well but if you have like real Yu-Gi-Oh cards you can put in like the code on the card and it'll put that card in the game which was dope because i had some pretty good cards put that into the game i don't know if you could do that with the ps1 but i, I know 100 percent you could with the game boy color anyway this game was awesome. You're going through uh, battling fucking iconic duelists. You're going up against Kaiba and Yugi and Yami and all these guys. Very difficult game. Very hard. Like, these motherfuckers, the computer, are just putting out super strong cards. They know all the combinations. They're really good. We didn't... I couldn't beat that game, but I loved playing it. I just loved dueling. And it took me a long time to get another game that was like this. I didn't get a game that scratched this itch until I got Legacy of the Duelist, I think it's called, on Modern Systems Now. It is an amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! game. Amazing! If you need a Yu-Gi-Oh! game, Legacy of the Duelist, Handi P, an incredible Yu-Gi-Oh! game. It's got every Yu-Gi-Oh! whatever you want. It's the ultimate package. That's where it's at. But this game got stolen from me. I don't know who did it. If, you, if, if you're listening and you did it, how could you? How could you steal that from me? But yeah, this game got stolen from me. I uh, I think I still I 
I don't know if I still have the box. It's, it's definitely empty. There's no disc in it anymore, but crushed me, man. Absolutely crushed me. I still see it out in the wild all the time, and I love it. But now I have uh, Legacy of the Duelist, and it's Forbidden Memories on crack. Like, it's just that, but so, so much better. But Jesus, I played the but Jesus out of Forbidden Memories until it got stolen. Absolutely loved that video game. And that's all of them, folks. That's all the games that I had growing up. There's, you know, there's games that I played but didn't really own. Like, yes, I played the original Resident Evil for like 15 minutes before I chickened out and passed the controller off. Same story with Silent Hill 1. I played like four minutes and chickened out, never touched it again. I played Tekken 3, but didn't own it like there's a lot of games that I played I just didn't they they weren't qualified for this list that I played them enough for them to make it so those are the games that I grew up with it you know there's a couple of bangers on here like I I loved Grand Theft Auto 2 Driver Crash Bash uh, Legend of Dragoon obviously Sledstorm Vigilante 8 like those games were my my bread and butter growing up but yeah there's obviously there's a handful of here some of the worst games I ever played like Bowling Kiss Pinball and Mary Kate and Ashley Crush Course like some of the worst games ever but when you're a kid it's okay because you don't really know the difference between good or bad and yeah you know once I got a hold of the internet I kind of stopped playing bad video games because you know there's just too many good ones to play why waste my time on bad ones but yeah I played my my fair share of bad video games on the PlayStation 1 but that was a lot of fun y'all that was a lot of fun going through all the old games that I played growing up Let me know what PlayStation 1 games you grew up with. Did we have any games here in common? Did we we have a similar childhood or anything like that? And I would have to imagine that some people listening to this never played the PlayStation 1, and that's fine as well. Uh, Any games here that maybe interest you? I mean, I would love for Rival Schools to come back. I, I loved Rival Schools. I don't know where it sits in the Street Fighter lore or if it's even in the same universe. I have no idea. But that game was fucking dope. And you know what? The PlayStation 1 was pretty dope, all said and done. Now, it is a system that is very hard to go back and play some of the games. Like, I remember going back and doing my due diligence and playing through Metal Gear Solid 1, the OG, and it was very fucking ugly. It was very hard to get through because that game at the time was... You know, cutting edge graphics. We're trying to go for realism. And realism, you know, back then looks like fucking dog shit. Now it's laughably bad looking. But there are other games that are still excellent to play now. Like, I played Final Fantasy IX like a couple of years ago. I thought that game still looks beautiful. Like, the cutscenes are still great to look at. It's still an excellent video game. Like, a lot of the old RPGs, I think, still hold the test of time. They still do really well. The old Final Fantasies. I still feel like Legend of the Dragoon still holds up for the most part. I'm going to have to go back and play it. I will go back and play it at some point, but it's a 40-hour RPG, and, you know, don't really want to have to do that right now, but I will someday go back, and I'll have a big old episode for Legend of the Dragoon, and, yeah, let me know. What were some of the ones... uh, Throw out some games that I didn't even mention. Like, what are some of the all-time hidden gems on PlayStation 1. Now, don't throw out, you know, Crash Bandicoots and and Final Fantasies. We know about that, but what about the other little ones, like um, Parasite Eve? That one always sounded so fucking cool to me. I would love to play those games. The old Persona games would be really cool. Like, I, I, good luck getting your hands on those. Those are insanely expensive now, and pretty much any PlayStation 1 RPG is going to run you some pretty good change. Now, I I admit, I, I see the I see the Final Fantasy games out in the wild all the time. Green label, black label, and they're all going for pretty good prices. And sometimes it's I have been able to get my Final Fantasies at a pretty fair price. I think I got Final Fantasy IX for like 20 bucks, which I feel like is a, a pretty good deal. I remember in like 2008 or nine, my buddy paid... Well over a hundred dollars for a green label Final Fantasy VII, like just out of control. I hope that the I know that the the retro market is pretty insane right now, but yeah, let me know what your favorite PlayStation One games are. Mine is still Legend of the Dragoon. That's my baby. That's my love, and that's that was the one that I grew up with for a long time, thinking like that's 
that's my game. Like I, I it took me a long, it took me years to finally hear of another person being like, oh, I played Legend of the Dragoon too, because. Like, a lot of people would be like, why would I play Legend of the Dragoon when there's Final Fantasy? It's, it's, I don't know, man. I can't tell you. I just played it because it looked fucking cool, and it was cool. I love that game. Dying for a remake. Legend of the Dragoon 2 something. Come on, guys. Like, let's get it done. Let's do this. But let me know what your favorite PlayStation 1 games were growing up. And as always, thank you guys so much for listening. You're awesome. But if you want to be even more awesome, make sure you're hitting that review button. Like it share it do all that stuff that you got to do to help the little guy out over here you want to help me out even more i upload all of these episodes to the youtube channel gamer gx videos go over there subscribe follow along drop a comment on the episodes that would be awesome i can answer any question related to video games wrestling hockey and general podcasting questions it doesn't matter drop a question i would love to answer it live for you on the podcast that would be a ton of fun shout your name out all that good stuff i have an email address as well if you want to have a private conversation absolutely fine as well it's there for you and there's a twitter page as well for announcements upcoming ideas you want to get in contact with me great place there as well and there you go everybody thank you so much for listening we're going to be doing so i should be doing sekiro for the next gamer cast should have that done ready to go I got a lot of ideas on on the docket right now. I got I I definitely want to get a versus done. I don't I haven't done a versus in a long time. It's just they are a lot of work, and you know they're not getting the the listening or the viewership as as much as some of the other ones that I don't have to put in nearly as much work into. So you know, let me know if we want to keep doing the versus thing because it's a lot of work, but the payoff hasn't really been excellent. But they are a lot of fun to do. So I have versus things on the docket like i want to do insomniac versus naughty dog 2d mario versus 3d mario i i have ps2 versus xbox versus gamecube even though we all know the answer is ps2 but it would still be fun to go back and talk about those old video games so if you got a versus that you'd like me to do throw it out there let me know i got a bunch on the docket I got a bunch of lists. I got the Sega Saturn retrospective, exact same idea as this episode, but with the Sega Saturn games that I grew up with. So lots of ideas for upcoming GamerCast episodes, uh, top 10 lists, uh, hardest video games. I got a new revised uh, part two of the hardest bosses I've ever faced now that I've gone through Sekiro and Metal Gear Rising. We got some new contenders on the list for sure. And yeah, so you're... uh, I am going to AEW Dynamite on Wednesday, going there live, so I'm going to have a live reaction show episode review for on the recap for the wrestling next week. Also, my wife and I just got our tickets for Money in the Bank at uh, in, in the summertime. Got our tickets for that, so we're going to Money in the Bank with the Heat Wave and the SmackDown three-day weekend. It's going to be amazing, so we're going to be doing that. And yes, oh, WrestleMania is uh, upcoming, which means the Wrestling Awards are also very soon. So I'm giving out my top matches of the year, wrestlers of the year, best and worst awards. It's going to be a lot of fun, and that's going to April is going to be nuts. April is going to be nuts for the GX Plus cast. We're going to have multiple wrestling pay-per-view reviews to do it's it's going to be chaotic so stick around with the gx plus cast tell your friends let your tell everybody about the podcast i don't want to have a normal job anymore i want this to be my job you know what i'm saying so help me help you do that for me does that make sense no that's fine that's all good but anyway thank you guys so much for listening you're awesome we'll be back again with some more gx plus cast